Hi everyone, today I'm speaking with Leland Oberst, who's the president and CEO of Innovative Fuel Systems. Uh, we speak about Edmonton's competitive advantages for attracting investments in clean tech, how he sees the hydrogen economy developing in Edmonton, and how he sees the alternative fuel industry evolving in Canada and globally. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Leland Oberst, President, CEO, and Founder of Innovative Fuel Systems. Hi, Leland. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. Thank you so much for taking the time. Let's jump right in. Um, can you just briefly describe your company, Innovative Fuel Systems, and what it does? Sure. Thanks, Tim. So uh, our company basically has a technology where on uh, in the heavy-duty diesel tractor or truck industry, we can get rid of up to 50% of the diesel burn and run it on natural gas at the same time. So basically natural gas and diesel uh, fuels combust at the same time. And uh, the attraction for our customers in that is twofold actually. Uh, firstly, a huge fuel cost savings for them as natural gas is in abundance in North America as, as we all know and, and quite a bit cheaper than diesel, diesel fuel. Uh, and the other huge benefit is uh, natural gas is a cleaner burning fuel. So uh, GHG reductions uh, are in play with this. And that's really in the last year, year and a half, it's really picked up uh, for excitement around that and what our technology can do. You're based in Edmonton, obviously, the, uh, the capital of Alberta. Um, if you look at Edmonton and the Edmonton region specifically, are there any other advantages that jump out that distinguish it uh, from other jurisdictions, either in Canada or abroad, in terms of its appeal for clean tech? And there, there, there's a few of them, but I, I guess to highlight a, a couple, uh, our skilled workforce. Um, we've got you know, tremendous engineers and scientists in Canada, and, and particularly in Alberta, actually. Um, and that comes from an extremely strong post-secondary educational system, um, and a tremendous experience with the energy industry which, which can help uh, us transition from a carbon industry to ultimately a zero carbon industry. I, I know we're lucky enough at Innovative Fuel Systems to have some of the, these tremendous uh, engineers. Um, and again, the abundance of experience within the en in energy industry, which as we all know, Alberta has had for the last 70 years compared to the rest of Canada will help us transition um, uh, both with bridge technologies and ultimately to a zero, zero carbon industry. Well, that's a great segue into the next question that I wanted to ask, which is how you basically see the evolution of the alternative fuel uh, space and industry, uh, both if you can at a global level, but also what you see happening uh, more regionally in Edmonton or in Canada as a whole. Well, I would say from a global level, Tim, um, you know, it's funny, the CEO of Total spoke out about three, four months ago. You know, he made a comment that with the revenue streams of, of the current oil and gas products, they're being used to drive green technologies and cleaner technologies, bridge technology over the next 10, 20 years to ultimately get to our goal in 2050. So it's definitely out there and, it's, and, 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 and the money's being spent today to get there um, from current products. You know, uh, in Edmonton and Alberta, uh, definitely strong, strong focus on diversifying to cleaner burning fuels. Um, bridge technologies. There's a copious amount of investment made by both uh, Alberta energy companies and the provincial government that I'm seeing right now. And some of this, the projected spend in the next 12, 18 months is phenomenal. So I'm, I'm not sure, you know, Edmonton by nature, we're quite understated. <laughs> um, uh, that's good and bad sometimes. Yeah, but the, um, the money's there. And I think we just need to have a, do a better job of broadcasting that it's, it's, it's not only being spent uh, locally and provincially, but the money's starting to flow in internationally to make these changes. One space that definitely has seen uh, a big amount of investment recently and is getting a lot of buzz uh, in Canada and abroad as well is, is hydro, hydrogen. Excuse me. Um, as somebody in uh, Edmonton's alternative fuel space, how do you see that segment growing um, where do you see it going in the coming years? You know, Edmonton can play a huge role in hydrogen production, uh, both gray and blue from natural gas. And 
as you know, there's been initial infrastructure announcements uh, that have already been made. And there's corporate and government task force with, with actually some real teeth this time that are looking at future infrastructure builds. Um, it will take a large investment, uh, both from the government and, and the corporate world, but uh, the money's already been earmarked. And I, and I do believe once the, the first few builds are, are made, uh, everything else will follow. The other thing I would say, and I can speak for our company ourselves, uh, you know, our, our patent that, um, the patents that we filed, it's not just a natural gas diesel blend for our technology. We can introduce other fuels and we specifically have identified hydrogen in one of them. Um, but obviously the infrastructure is not built right now. But once it is built, we can introduce hydrogen as a fuel source as well for heavy duty diesel trucks once the infrastructure is built, as I said. You mentioned that uh, it's already getting interest from both uh, local players and those coming from abroad. Um, if you look specifically at the hydrogen space, obviously Edmonton is not the only city chasing this opportunity. Um, you mentioned talent as something that Edmonton and the whole region has. Are there any other competitive advantages exclusively uh, or, or that are very pertinent to hydrogen that you would identify as why you think Edmonton can take a leading role in this uh, burgeoning sector? I am passionate about talent because that drives everything. So I, you know, I've said that already, but, but I, I know that the specifically within the U of A and, and other Alberta universities, the, the, the robust educational offerings. So it's not just the students coming in, but what they're actually teaching um, to produce these highly skilled engineers and scientists and continue to produce. And again, I've said before, we're lucky to have some of them. I, I, I really believe that's the key element. Um, I would say also the identified infrastructure buildouts um, that we have that other uh, areas of the country or the world doesn't have already uh, will give us a head start. And then I think the momentum will just uh, steamroll from there because again, we've got so much talent out there that have been in the energy industry that we're, we're gonna be able to transition into this. Um, Again, sort of beating a drum, but I, I just think that's that that's what we have over other jurisdictions, both in Canada and the world. And I guess again, um, you know, the abundance of natural gas that we've got in this province obviously ha it gives us an advantage over some areas as well because it can create the blue and gray uh, uh, hydrogen uh, from natural gas. So that that's an obvious natural resource that we've got you know below our feet that other areas don't have as well. Leland, you, you've given me so much time already. I just want to wrap up with one question. Um, as a company that is innovation focused, um, could you tell me what supports exist either from uh, government or other sources uh, to, to enable companies to develop cutting edge technologies in Alberta and Canada? And if you do have experience dealing with them, uh, what that experience was like? So from a provincial perspective, Alberta Innovates has, has been fantastic for us. We've had a number of... Um, programs that we've been involved with with them where they've given us financial support and it's been fantastic and uh, recently emissions reduction alberta or era has uh, sponsored us on a project with uh, KG canada and that's been uh, really great and that's over the next year and a half as well federally uh, irap um, industrial research assistance program i think i got that right uh, they've been with us right from the beginning um, We've had, uh, I think it's, we're onto our fourth project with them as well, with our technology and a lot of support from them. So, uh, and, you know, we're looking at some right now with Western diversification because we're into the commercialized, commercialization phase of our technology. And it looks like they're going to come to the table for us. So um, there is a lot of support out there. I, I will say it's a lot of work to win those. But once you win those, uh, the provincial federal government has been very supportive to see this through for us and to make sure we're successful. 